Thanks, Jeff. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody also for the invitation to be here today uh, to talk a little bit about uh, an area that I've been conducting research in for the past 20 plus years. <clears throat> it's amazing how time flies. And that basic concept is the use of uh, black soldier flies to recycle waste. As Jeff was talking about uh, earlier, uh, a modern philosophy for, towards waste management or pest management is really trying to rely on the inherent strengths of the system. <clears throat> uh, what I mean by that is that historically, um, historically, what you find is that uh, the system was agriculture relied on insecticides predominantly for pest management. Uh, by relying on insecticides as an input-driven system, what we found is that it really reduced the strength of the inherent system, uh, which affected the stability of that, that system itself. So what we see today is that there's more effort being focused on uh, how we can rely on those inherent strengths, and examples of that are now that we need to learn to tolerate some pests being present at low numbers. So we try to use words to describe uh, pest management such as suppression, acceptance, and monitoring. What I mean by that is if we can monitor the pests and keep an eye on the populations and know when to treat, then we can suppress those populations to a, an acceptable level. doesn't mean we'll eradicate the pests, but at least reduce the numbers so there's not an economic impact. Now, there's some very common cultural practices that are in place there, such as nutrient management or waste management, and also limiting insecticides because these insecticides can be harmful to uh, the native biocontrol agents that are present within a given area. So if we start to focus more on those inherent strengths, what you find is that uh, there's less input financially, which at the same time we can increase productivity, so we maximize dividends for the producer. Now when you think about livestock production across the United States, uh, there's a lot of different forms of it, ranging from poultry, uh, as you see in the top left, to beef cattle in the center, and even dairy in the bottom right. So I'm in Texas, so we have quite a bit of livestock production uh, that we deal with. Uh, within the state of Texas, what you see is that uh, Texas is number one in beef cattle production, number one in sheep production, number one in horse production, number six in poultry and egg production, six in broiler production, ninth in dairy production, and 16th in hog production. Point being is we have a lot of animals in Texas, not surprised. Well, at the same time, something that we have to deal with, something that I deal with within my job, is we have all of this agriculture, all of this livestock production, but we also have a number of the top urban centers in the U.S. We have Houston, which ranks number four in the country, San Antonio at number eight with 1.2 million residents, Dallas at number nine, Austin at number 16, Fort Worth at number 19, El Paso at 21, and Arlington at number 50. So we have a huge amount of livestock that produce a lot of goods for the state of Texas and the U.S., but they also produce a lot of waste, which means there's a lot of fly production. And when you have that kind of agriculture next to this level of urbanization, um, what you find is that these events, such as livestock, and uh, urbanization result in something that's quite uh, nuclear, uh, as demonstrated in this picture. The point being is that there's a lot of friction between urban environments and um, agricultural environments. And, and you see a lot of this play out in the courtroom with Right to Farm Acts. So we have to find a way to manage this waste. And it's only economical to distribute that waste within a given radius of the facility in terms of fertilizer. And even at that level, the land can only incorporate so much of that waste um, as fertilizer because it becomes saturated, so you have to find alternate solutions. And that's where the black soldier fly comes in. It's a sustainable manure management system for confined animal facilities. You may be asking, why an insect? Well, let me tell you a little bit about this insect and why I think it, it's a viable option. 
Uh, this is an image of the black soldier fly. It's a wasp-like uh, fly in appearance. Uh, it's, it's found throughout the temperate and tropic regions of the world. Uh, it colonizes a variety of waste, ranging from food waste to uh, manure or even vertebrate remains, and it's active most of the year. So this is very common throughout the southern United States. Uh, most of the work in the past has been done in uh, poultry operations. This is an example of a um, old school, uh, I'm sorry, not old school, uh, old style California layer facility. So you have the birds uh, up elevated off ground and they defecate and that manure collects down in the bottom. And when you look at these facilities, what you find is that underneath the, the birds, you have these large manure pits uh, where this manure collects. And then if you get closer, what you'll see is that some of these facilities are loaded with black soldier fly larvae. In fact, uh, what you find is that um, the larvae can be so deep they can be up to your knees. Now, initially it was thought of as a pest, but today it's known that it's actually quite beneficial. Um, an interesting experience I have working in these facilities, this is an older facility, the newer ones are 100,000 birds and they pump out about 80,000 eggs a day, but they also uh, release quite a bit of nutrients, i.e. manure. And I remember as a grad student when I was learning to work with the species is opening up the bottom of one of these facilities and you look in and it's just raining manure. And uh, at the time I asked my advisor, I said, Dr. Shepard, uh, do we have to go in there? And Dr. Shepard said, no, Jeff, you have to go in there. And that was my introduction to, to the waste management system and the confined animal facility. So consider a form of baptism. Now, a lot of the work that was initially done was done by my advisor, Dr. Shepard, uh, at the University of Georgia. What he found is that the black soldier fly, when it colonizes uh, animal waste, it can reduce that manure by 50%. It can also reduce the nitrogen and phosphorus associated with it by 50%. It can completely suppress house flies. And then the larvae can actually be self-harvested under 30% fat and 42% protein. So there's been a lot of work done on this insect as a, um, as a means of uh, feed production. So we can take the oil, turn it into biodiesel, we can take the protein and turn it into feed. So there's actually a lot of benefits associated with this insect. But at the time, when I started working in this area in 1998, uh, there wasn't a lot known about the biology. It was an incomplete picture, like this fragmented image that you're seeing now. Uh, through the research that I was able to do, and I still do to this day, I found that um, the eggs take three to four days to develop. Larval development takes about 14 days. Pupae about 14 days, and then the adults live about 14 days. But the uh, main question is, why, why aren't they pests? This is a pair um, mating right here. And what I found is that their lives are driven, well, to mate. Uh, the adults emerge, they find these areas to uh, collect, and what they do is they form what are called lecking sites. It's an aggregation of adults, and what they do is they mate, uh, and then they return uh, to a facility and lay their eggs. But what's fascinating about them is that um, a lot of their mating behavior is driven by sunlight. So if it's a bright, sunny day, they'll actually mate more often. Uh, I also did some work looking at uh, developing methods for overposition. This is an image of uh, female and male uh, mating in the top left. And then the center image are adults laying eggs. And we can collect these eggs, as you see in this image. So we can collect these eggs and we can inoculate where we want. So we can actually go into a facility and inoculate and put the, make sure the larvae are feeding where, where we want them to feed. Uh, we also found that this insect's uh, quite sensitive to insecticides, so if it is something you're interested in employing, you have to be careful about what you use because basically what we found is that this insect is pretty much as, uh, susceptible to any insecticide out there. So you have to be very careful what you use. And this is an image of an insecticide trial we did with black soldier flies where we exposed them to uh, known insecticide treatments. Uh, and this is just an example of some of the field work we were doing with the black soldier fly. So through the work that I did, what we found is that basically um, these adults, they emerge, they don't aggregate around facilities, they don't go into people's homes, they're actually looking for a place to mate. So they'll aggregate around plants around a facility and they'll mate. Uh, it takes about two days for them to mature to that point of mating. 
After they have mated, usually about two days later, they'll return back to the facility and they'll lay their eggs. And the resulting larvae um, will reduce the manure and the associated house fly population. So again, a benefit of using this insect to reduce waste is that it will um, suppress uh, house fly populations. And again, the, the larvae can be self-harvested. What I mean by that is you don't need mechanical equipment to collect the larvae. They'll collect themselves, and then you can use them as feed uh, with your animals. Uh, studies have been done with fish, frogs, chickens, swine. Uh, they're quite high in protein, quite high in fat. Uh, they're very good for fish, so they're really good for uh, raising fish. So a lot of value to them. So the system's pretty well complete. Uh, that's where we are today. Now, you don't have to build a large facility to do this. If you uh, have a small facility, a small farm, and you'd like to do this, there's a company called Protoculture that produces these pods. And the way the pod works is you put the waste in and the fly colonizes. And then you see the angled slope, that's where the larvae collect and then they fall out of a tube. So it's a self-harvesting system. And this is what a unit looks like. And they make different sizes. They make one that's probably about 20 gallons and they make another that is, is quite large, uh, well over 100 gallons, I believe. So you can build these units and you can you can put them on your farm and put them to work. On an industrial scale, um, there are factories now popping up around the world uh, and a lot of people doing research in this area. Uh, there are two companies in Canada. Uh, there's two companies in the US right now. Uh, there's a number of us doing research in this area. Uh, Europe, uh, Thailand, China, uh, where they're producing 20 tons of larvae per week but they want to increase that to 20 tons of larvae per day. So in summary, um, we know quite a bit about the adult black soldier fly, but there's still a lot to be done. Uh, there's a lot of hurdles that we have to overcome. Mostly we're working with mass production and uh, while diversifying with diverse waste, because a lot of things could come in uh, to a facility when you're trying to grow larvae. Uh, also safety. We need to be conscious of the microbes associated with these resources and make sure that we're not uh, proliferating pathogens. But with that said, the work we've done so far in my lab and through another lab, uh, E. coli and salmonella are reduced when we reduce waste with the black soldier fly. And we really need to work on uh, federal law because currently you can't mass produce uh, insect and sell it as feed. You can give it away, you can use it on your farm, but you can't sell it. So there's a few hurdles still in place, but we're getting there. And I, I suspect within the next 10 years or so, uh, this will actually be an industrialized product available on the market.